Hi, very warm welcome to Dust Shove Collectibles. Today I want to talk about a very special wagon. Yeah, hi, so this is uh, quite a important little model in the uh, history of model railways and uh, indeed Hornby. So this is a 1973 wagon. Um, the important thing about it is the writing on the side and this is the first time advertising for a brand was printed onto any of the model railways so i mean recent times we've seen hamleys and i guess harrods and various others get their logo printed on the side of wagons um for special releases in their shops etc um, we see lado do it all the time with their model cars um, but this was the first one now the wagon itself is nothing special this is a 19 i think it's about a 1960s triang wagon um, nothing particularly important but um, the name on the side BT's it's a big model shop back in its day and uh, I thought what I'd do is just give a little bit of history around uh, BT's and and the wagon yes yeah. yeah, so I've got very fond memories of BT's in the 1970s so late 1970s I guess early 80s possibly um, my father used to deliver things in London and my brother and I during the school holidays would have to go with him because obviously there's nobody to you know with the childcare situation so um, we would sit in the back of the car and get driven around London all day and it was you know back then <laughs> you know there was no computer games or anything to keep us entertained so you can imagine having two kids in the back of the car especially during the summer when it's hot um, trying to keep us quiet well the highlight of the day and sort of the bribe if you like was that we could go into Beatty's and one of my dad's deliveries was just literally on the corner where Beatty's Holborn shop was so he would park around the corner and he would go into the shop that he was delivering to and we would walk probably two shops down and there's this massive and it was massive um, shop um, amazing back in the day it, it had everything in there I remember walking through the doorway and you know there's model kits in f to one side over the back of the shop was all of the model railways and over here radio control cars and it was the most fabulous place I've got such fond memories of it and it's such a shame that uh, you know it's all gone now it's all gone and uh, when Beatty's finally did close and uh, go bankrupt um, a lot of the shops were sold to model zone and that particular Holborn site did actually become a model zone um, for a little bit until um, sadly they went under as well. Yeah, so uh, what I want to do is just, just give a little bit of history to this little wagon and uh, go through it in detail. And I do have a, a 1979 um, book from BT's. This is their catalogue um, and I thought it might be interesting to have a quick look through that. In the 1930s, Colonel BT and, and Charles Whale opened a model shop named Southgate Models in London. By 1960 there were two shops next to each other, one sold all of the new model railways and the other one sold the second hand or used uh, equipment. Uh, after Charles Weld left the company, BT bought the Bassett Loke brand of shops um, and opened many stores across the UK, I think there was about 30 in total. Um, and this is where uh, this wagon comes in because this would have been during that, that era. Uh, late 60s early 70s this is 1973 this wagon when Beatty retired the business was bought by Richard Constrom I believe this is where Rico came from so Rico the slot car manufacturer I see it come up and again now and again you've got RI which is obviously Richard and KO which is the first two initials of uh, Constrom or first two letters of Constrom and it was also Constrom that brought uh, Tamiya to the UK. I believe he was the first importer of the Japanese. In the end, by the late 90s, uh, Beatty's had 60 stores nationwide, but it had turned a little bit more into a toy shop. They branched out into computer games, and indeed it was the computer games that finally caused them a problem. Um, they made some bad decisions with it, and in 2001, the company was placed into administration. And the rest they say is history with model zone now distant memory as well i mean the brand model zone is owned by wh smith but uh, no longer has a high street presence yeah so on to this article um this is absolutely fascinating the article is on talking about this piece of paper found in the hornby archive and this is actually the order form um for these wagons and the date on that order form is the 3rd of april 1973 which effectively means it's 50 years to this week so this wagon uh, the order was placed 50 years ago this week 
um, which I, I just think, you know, fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So 50 year old wagon and this is the order form and I'm going to read it out because I can't, my memory's not that good. So basically the order was for 3,000 wagons at a price of 15 pence each and they were to be given away, one with every Hornby train set at one of their stores. Uh, the wagons were numbered R244 and Beatties were required to pay £40 towards the cost of the dies required to uh, print on the sides. So on the sides of this wagon we've got the four main shops of Beatties at the time which uh, the one for me was uh, the Holborn address, there was also one in Broadway London and we've got Manchester and Leeds. Yeah so um, fascinating article, got me thinking. I did have one of the wagons so um, I wanted a sort of show that to you and then finally um, just to talk about this I'm going to put this over here before I knock it off the, de the desk yeah so I just want to um, just to conclude add a few comments about the catalogue because it's quite interesting so this is 1979 catalogue priced at £2.99 um, doesn't that feature any branding such as Hornby or Pico they're all muddled up and basically it goes through different wag you know steam locos diesel locos the you know various other things in here um, but the interesting thing is some of the pictures we've got blanks in some areas but then a lot of the pictures are actually hand stuck into this so I can only think back in the day some of the photographs weren't ready when this went to print and some poor soul has had to spend the time gluing pictures into the catalogue I can't believe somebody would would have done this as a hobby you know afterwards I mean I think this is genuinely how it was sold because there are so many of them every single page has five or six areas like this one here where where the, the pictures are actually stuck in so if anybody knows if that was the case back in the day I'd be very interested um, and then the final thing to mention in here just going towards the back is the, the back of the catalogue here we got a series of order forms so you could mail order your train so you'd fill out the catalogue here postage and packing was 75 pence up to five pounds 50 pence for five to seven pounds over seven pounds the post was free you'd fill in your order add it up and uh, yeah you send your order form off and I guess they'd post it to you it says 14 day delivery and here it just shows the the various shops central london south east north london north london birmingham bristol essex i remember going to the romford uh bts yeah my, my grandfather took me there he lived quite close to that hertfordshire kingston on thames leeds liverpool manchester and it goes on southampton so it was nationwide um but yeah just a little throw back into the history there uh, yeah i've got very fond memories of bts it uh you know back in the day uh, i yeah as a young child walking in there is mesmerizing the all the locos and everything so there you go i just wanted to um, point this wagon out that um you can pick these up they aren't they aren't silly expensive they're not like the christmas wagons that go for hundreds of pounds these are you know unboxed maybe 10 maybe 15 pounds and it's a real special item to have in a hornby collection because as i say this is the first the first of those sort of advertising wagons um, and uh, yeah as I say 50 years old this week so uh, I think a great thing for anybody's collection anyway I just thought I'd share that with you and um, yeah I'll uh, leave it there thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one